So um, I, I was debating as I saw the agenda whether it's, it's better to be the guy before lunch or the guy after lunch. Um, and, and when you have lunch with a delicious brownie dessert and wine, uh, I I'm, I'm think I'm coming down on the on side of the uh, argument of being the guy before lunch because I think you're all going to be asleep regardless of what I say. So this is good. So if you all want to take a nap and I'll just talk for 25 minutes, I'll wake you up when I'm done. Everybody will be nice and relaxed. We'll be in good shape. And then I'll say absolutely nothing controversial. We'll get anybody mad and we won't have to argue at all. Um, but I, I can't do that. I'm a labs guy. I have to say something controversial and I have to, to argue. It's in, it's in my DNA. So um, let me just um, talk a little bit. The, the title of the, the presentation, at least, is, is up here, is Cloud, it's good for everyone, but not for everything. And, and I think that's consistent with a lot of what I heard today. Um, uh, you know, the, the other advantage of being the last person to, to actually present content is I get to dynamically change my slides. So the deck that I'm about to present is very different than the deck that I started off with this morning. Uh, I was changing slides, adding stuff, um, and pretty soon I realized I only had one page left in my deck, so I had to add some stuff in there. So we'll, we'll try to get some content here, but th that's the, the thesis that I've been going out there and telling our clients for the past couple years when we talk about cloud. There is something that every organization can take from cloud, um, but it's not for everything you do. Um, so to the TransUnit example, it's not for core trading platforms. Great, but there's lots of applications which might make a lot of sense. Um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter what geography you're in. There is something to take out from you. So if, if you just want to hear the central thesis of the talk and then doze off, good, we've covered that. Um, I also thought that uh, maybe after lunch, a little bit of uh, lighthearted entertainment might be useful for everybody. So I figured, um, you know, sort of tracking this technology for the past couple of years, I figured something is at the top of its hype cycle when it starts hitting the, uh, the funny pages in the newspaper. So I, I give you the comics do cloud. Um, Dilbert, we love him. Uh, this was a few weeks ago. Uh, this was Dilbert's pointy-haired boss. Yes, it was, as you think, just last week. Um, and and, and who, is the, who is the person that said management by magazine? That was you? Okay. So um, this is what I feel like a lot of our, our, our clients are starting to sort of ask us about cloud because they say, hey, I read about cloud in such and such magazine. We've got to get me some of that cloud stuff. Um, and I, I try to actually avoid doing the Dilbert example. Uh, we talked about security, and it, it, it so happens that Dilbert had an answer on security as well. So everybody remembers Mordock. <laughs> I, I particularly like this. So cloud, you know, if you start talking about cloud too much around internal IT people, they, they might start getting a little bit twitchy. Um, and in, in the complexity that we're talking about this morning and, and, and some of the movement and the, the inefficiency in IT is, is indirectly a, a, an indictment of IT organizations and things like that. Uh, we can all do a lot better. Um, some of us do pretty well with what we got, and, but there's a lot of organizations out there that are just not harnessing the power of the IT that they have effectively and, and in an effective fashion. So, uh, with that as sort of our, uh, as sort of our baseline of conversation, let me tell you just a little bit about Accenture Technology Labs, because I'm pretty sure that most of you don't even realize that Accenture has a labs organization. So um, I, I think most of you probably know who Accenture is, right? We're a large global systems integration firm, or if you only look in airports, you think we make golf clubs. Um, we actually have a technology research and development organization. Uh, it's about 20 years old or so. Uh, and, we mainly look at emerging technologies, and when I say emerging, I mean about three to five years out from reasonable adoption in the marketplace. Um, and we try to figure out what those technologies are going to mean for our clients and for ourselves. So we're, we're responsible for a couple things. Uh, we, we own Accenture's technology vision, um, and, and cloud was part of our technology vision in 2007, 2008, 2009, and, and apparently, according to the latest version I got in my mailbox last night, 2010. So that, that's good. So at least I, I'm doing something visionary. I feel good about that. Um, we build software and technology assets, or, or call applications of technologies, to help our clients and, and help ourselves. Uh, so we build a lot of things in our labs, uh, which eventually make themselves out to client engagement. So think of the stuff we build in labs as the concept cars. 
Uh, the first client engagements are, like, say, the bespoke Formula One racers. Uh, and then eventually, you know, the overall Accenture juggernaut will scale things up and take it out to lots of clients. Um, I, I, have a, I have an interesting position with an Accenture is, and that's I get to, get to go to things like this, and I get to pontificate about new technologies. But then on Monday, there's a very good real chance I'm going to be having to screw it in someplace. So it keeps me honest. So I can't get too far afield of what is actually deliverable. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of credibility. Um, we do a ton of innovation workshops, bringing clients into our four locations. Um, there's Chicago, where I'm from. Uh, there's Silicon Valley, which is an obvious location for labs. There's Bangalore, which is where we do a tremendous amount of our systems integration work. Um, and then there's the hardship assignment in the labs, which is in Sofia and Tiblis, which is the south of France. Uh, if anyone needs to visit Accenture Technology Labs and they happen to have to go to Sofia and Tiblis, it's a terrible neighborhood, rough. I think I ought to be with you, so just contact me, and I will personally escort you down to Cannes uh, for your visit. And then we do a lot of collaborative research. Um, the technology vision is up there in the corner. We, we generally organize ourselves around these, these five labs, customer, enterprise, infrastructure, just because technologies change a lot. Those things don't. So you know, we can kind of do technology shifts as time goes by. So that's a little bit about what I do and why I'm interested in this stuff and why I'm on about cloud. OK. So um, I figured everybody was going to do a definition, so I'd have to throw my own, own up there. See, uh, in, in, in object-oriented programming terms, cloud is an overloaded operator. Uh, it's got about an infinite number of definitions, so I figured what's one more? It's not really going to hurt. Um, but there's a, you know, this, is the, this is the Accenture definition, an Accenture, a collection of network-hosted resources accessible from anywhere. Can that be more boring? Um, and, and that's by choice uh, because I focus on some of the attributes. Uh, that you can tease out from that definition. Uh, elasticity of services, where you can shrink uh, and grow your use of services, track your, your consumption of resources very closely with demand. Um, so at least some notion of an abstraction away from the guts of how those services are actually provisioned. Uh, I, I like to make the joke, you know, I don't care if, um, I'll, I'll pick on Martin for a second here, I don't care if EC2 is an infinite army of monkeys with abacuses, uh, as long as the price is right and the response time is okay. You know, and if they can keep the monkeys fed, you know, whatever. I don't care, and it shouldn't really matter to me. Um, programmatic control of these resources is really important to me when I think about cloud because automation plus elasticity actually leads to some of the benefits in terms of the cost perspective in cloud. Consumption-based costing, um, you know, I, I like not paying up front. You know, when I start seeing these uh, purported cloud providers who want you to sign uh, year-long year contracts at high cost, I hold on to my wallet, I back away. Um, but those are the types of attributes that, that I look at when I'm evaluating cloud providers, or at least people are nominally cloud. Uh, and, I, and I do think the hype cycle is starting to reach epic proportions because I, I, I keep a lot of the vendor uh, merchandise and literature I get over the years um, just so I can compare later on what's changed. And I'm seeing an awful lot of people whose, whose architecture has not significantly changed very much in, in the past couple of years, except for the inclusion of lots of the word cloud through there. So sort of buyer beware. Lastly, and, and I think uh, the transunion example sort of talked about this, um, in terms of attributes, th this notion of the ability to loosely couple services in reality, we all know we're not going to do that. We're going to locate our data close to the compute. We're not going to be storing data in one place, compute in a different place. Uh, we'll generally tend to use services from one cloud provider uh, because the economics do not allow you to really move things around. Uh, the physics don't allow you to really move things around as much as you want to. But at least in terms of, of a philosophical, uh, you know, philosophical quest, yeah, let's loosely couple them. That would be nice. Uh, and this tracks very nicely with the NIST definition. Somebody else brought that up there. Uh, you can read the 67 pages behind it if you really want to. But at least in terms of the, 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 the rules of thumb, elasticity, consumption-based, and programmatic control are sort of the deal, the deal breakers. If you don't have that, you're do, not doing cloud in my mind. Okay, so um, does size matter? Do you, do you care how big of an organization you are? Uh, when I, when I give this cloud talk and somebody mentioned that normally you're the person that's trying to explain it, so what, what am I, what am I, I'm not a, I'm not a visionary, I'm a, I'm, I'm the guy that's coming after lunch. Um, 
I, I try to do a lot of the reasons why you'd want to do cloud. But I think you all get that. But if you start taking a look at the lens of the different types of companies who might be using cloud and, and what the impacts of those types of companies are, uh, I think there is something that, that might not be readily apparent. Okay, so cost reduction. We all, we all kind of get that. Avoiding buying stuff, avoiding capital expenditure. Uh, for small and medium-sized businesses, I cannot imagine how you would do things without cloud these days. Uh, if I were an investor in the Valley uh, or anyplace else and somebody came to me with a business plan that had heavy capital expenditures, I would politely shove them out the door laughing maniacally because I know there's an easier way to do it. There's an easier way to track your company's response. And in back in the dot bomb industry in days, you know, many racks of servers got bought, lots of co-location co uh, contracts were signed, all on the aspirations of being the next big thing. And some of those companies hit big, and some cratered magnificently. Cloud, it would at least allow you to spend your money wisely with respect to infrastructure. And you also think about developers and things like that. Uh, they, you know, as much as we would like them to, they don't work 24, hour, 24 hours a day. So the ability to stretch and, and shrink your development environments, do better testing, do better stress testing, is very important for small and medium-sized businesses. But for the enterprise, that, equal, that, that applies equally well. Um, and we're seeing a lot of use cases out there right now with develop and test, uh, with um, reduction of just sort of systems that don't have high business value, but are costing a lot from an IT perspective. Um, that, that differential between the, the peak load and, and the average load is a, is a place that we always look to from an enterprise perspective to find, hey, maybe this application makes a lot of sense to move to, to cloud. Um, is there a response time issue? Is there a, a customer service issue which, uh, which might be affected by that elasticity? Um, my Accenture colleagues uh, will, will laugh when I bring up this example, but we have this little application. It's beloved by all 185,000 of us called My Performance. Uh, and it's what we use to do our, our, our feedback forms and our annual reviews. So you, as you might imagine, the other thing has a nice steady state throughout the year. Uh, around about May or June time frame, we have 185,000 people banging the snot out of the system. And that's a technical term, mind you, banging the snot um, out of the system. And invariably, we always have some outage. And it's nothing against our IT organization. We just, they just simply can't predict uh, to a great degree, how, how many of us are going to hit at the same time. Well, we're moving that over to the cloud right now. We're trying it on Amazon. We're trying it on Azure. We're trying it on a number of environments just to see what the new response time is. And we can, we can demonstrate a very large savings by moving that infrastructure over to the cloud. Now, this is not a mission-critical application. This is not a transactional system or something that that last millisecond screws you out of revenue, but it's something that's necessary for us to do. So it makes a lot of sense from an enterprise perspective. So that's cost reduction. The elasticity and the scalability. And this one, I think, is interesting. And this should be, if anything, give large-scale enterprises a little bit of pause. Not from the perspective that they're giving them pause of not using it, but they now have to think about where their next competitor is coming from. I've spoken to a lot of iBanks and hedge funds over the past year. And the big guys kind of get it because they're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, why are we operating a data center? Why are we doing this when we could have somebody else where they get it? But then they say, but then there's a lot of really smart people out there. I don't own them all. What happens when somebody comes up with a better quant model or a better way to do things? And now they have access to infrastructure and capability that used to be the purview of us, the big guys, the guys that had deep pockets. So I think from a small and medium-sized business, this, this cloud offers people the opportunity to play at a weight class, and I think I'm stealing that from somebody, one of my neighbors over there, play in a weight class that they just were not able to be in before. And that's a very liberating, very powerful business tool to use. When you all of a sudden have access to the same capabilities at a, at a reasonably forecastable price as your big competitor, well, that, that levels a playing field a little bit. But from the enterprise perspective, you think about the, the data sets that we have access to at the enterprise, the problem sets we have at the enterprise. Um, you can just do things that you weren't able to do before. You can try stuff that if you were in a strict cost-conscious economy, you might never try. But you can give people the flyer to try new things. Um, if I look at the, the utilization of something like AWS, I know there's a ton of pharma companies out there just doing stuff that they wouldn't be able to do before because it's cheap, and now you can try new things. 
So I think the entry into new markets and this ability to discover new applications, new data sets, new analytics is going to be huge for the enterprise. Speed to market, this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, over the past couple of years, every time I've given a cloud talk, I've asked the audience, how long would it take you as a business user to get an environment out of your IT department? Um, the, the best was, was five minutes. That's because that was the guy that ran the VMware infrastructure and he was just being a smart aleck. The worst was one year, and at that point, why do you bother? I mean, if it's going to take you a year to do a system, I mean, why do anything? That was a government, um, state government in the states, um, and the average is about eight weeks. So that, that sheer length of time to get anything done leads us to a lot of the IT inefficiencies. When it takes so long to get something, you never give it up. So once you get those servers, once you get that storage, once you get that organization set up, you're never going to let it go. You're going to keep on building upon it, and you're going to keep on having greater, greater inefficiencies. Once you can move to the sort of speed to market within the cloud, uh, plus the types of data sets and the types of things you can do with business partners, I think there's going to be a lot of new interesting applications that result from cloud. Um, High performance computing, you know, I think this is still mainly an enterprise play, but I'm starting to see academics and some small, particularly in the life sciences area, companies using cloud to great effect. You know, when you're a small genomics company uh, and you don't have billions of dollars to spend on a high performance computing environment, farming stuff off to the cloud can be very interesting. So once again, leveling the play, playing field between a small enterprise with reasonably shallow pockets and a big enterprise. Okay, um, challenges, I think we've covered all these. Um, security, you know, I, I think, you know, we probably have vigorous debates about this, but I think security is a reflexive objection to cloud because everybody's security requirements are absolutely unique, uh, are absolutely different, are absolutely the top, and there's no way that anybody's going to manage my data. And I hear that from everybody. Um, funny story, I, I moved an application for a US governmental agency onto the cloud. The business owner loved it because it was a highly variable application. They didn't like paying for a lot of infrastructure. Fortunately, the business owner didn't bother to tell the security guys about it. They, they gave birth to a baby cow uh, and presented us with a 75-page list of requirements that we absolutely positively must meet in order for that application to go live on cloud. So, a uh, little thought experiment. How many people want to guess how many of those security requirements were actually met within the client's own data center? Could they even tell you? Okay, so <laughs> that's the jaded cynicism there, or, or jaded vision error, no, zero. That's the voice of experience. Um, they, they could. Okay. They didn't like the answer, but they could. It was three. Wow. Three out of 75 pages. All right, so that's the reflection. Security is a big deal. All right, but I think it is wrong to assume that a cloud service provider is no less an expert or no less dedicated to security. What I think is going to be a huge issue for the enterprise is software licensing. Um, software salespeople also give birth to baby cows when you think about cloud because removing that sort of perpetual licensing revenue drives people nuts. And no one's gotten it right yet. For some applications, uh, as evidenced by uh, the TransUnion, performance and latency will be a deal killer. But some applications can live entirely in the cloud, so that might not be a, as big of an issue. I think management is going to be a challenge. Um, my, my nightmare is we come back in five years and we find a lot of our enterprise have adopted cloud very, very happily, but now have a separate IT organization devoted to managing their cloud resources. That's wrong. That's, you will have screwed it up very badly if you do that. And internal IT has to proceed along two fronts. They have to increase the efficiency of their own IT stack to be more cloud-like, not build a cloud, because I can't stand the term internal cloud, but be more automated, more efficient, um, and allow their users, their, their business people, to consume cloud resources in a seamless fashion. Uh, so management, I think, is going to be a big challenge. We're working a lot right now on how you can actually take a service orientation both inside and outside the enterprise. Uh, I think cloud offers a very interesting challenge to data and disaster recovery. I think it's going to change it a little bit. Uh, we talked a little about data sovereignty. Um, but these are the sorts of things I hear from enterprise all the time. We can do it better, faster, cheaper. Great. Why haven't you yet? Um, and, and usually you get a lot of sheepish looks because uh, it's very difficult to, to articulate why you're taking eight weeks to do something when somebody can take five minutes and, and still say with a straight face, we're doing it better. 
Um, I love this one. Uh, Vendor X say we can do this by buying their product. Um, great, if it were that easy. How come you haven't done it yet? You know, shouldn't we be talking about you know, like quantum computing or something at this point if it was that easy? Uh, already doing cloud. I think a couple companies are very, very good in their level of automation, their level of virtualization, their efficiency of IT resources, but those are in the single digits, I think, in the, in the global 500. There's a lot of inefficiency out there. Um, I've already talked about why this is not for startups and small and medium-sized business. The, the, legal, the legal side of cloud right now is, is, is going to be interesting. Um, this is, this is fun to watch lawyers' heads explode uh, when you show them a click-through agreement or things like that, and they're like, but, 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 but you know, I, I don't see 67 pages of terms and conditions. How, how can we sign this? Um, I think we're going to see an evolution in terms of the cloud providers. We'll have commodity services for commodity pricing, commodity, commodity agreements. We'll have enterprise agreements come in there. But the fact of the matter is, uh, it, whatever cloud provider is out there, unless they're offering a significant cost reduction or increase in capability uh, or, or, or some sort of service that an enterprise can't pull off at a significant cost improvement, they're just not going to be successful in the marketplace. Uh, and lastly, hey, I'm not going to migrate my whole, my whole infrastructure to the clouds. And, and I'm not suggesting that. I think that we're going to have internal IT around for a long, 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 long time. So Irving was using about a five-year time horizon. I mean, think about all those applications which exist in the enterprise which have been comfortably running on mainframes for decades. No one's managed to scare them away yet. And no one understands what's in them anymore. They're just not going to move because cloud has come along. We've had a couple different technology refreshes since the mainframe has come out. And nothing's happened to move those applications off. They're not going anywhere. They, they are, in, in, in my terms, in the zone of NFW. Um, that's no... Blanking, no, no feasible way. Thank you. Oh, I, yeah, that's great. No feasible way. Um, but I do think that we can see a net increase in the efficiency of IT, uh, probably done with less people. It doesn't mean you have to shrink your IT stack right now, but you can get a lot more out of it. So uh, I will leave you with my guiding principles for cloud computing. And I talk to a lot of our clients and help them start moving applications over. These are just sort of, you know, Joe's rules of cloud. Um, it's just one way of doing things. You know, you're not going to see Accenture having a cloud computing organization. That's stupid because we don't have a client server computing organization. We don't have a web computing organization. It's just going to be a delivery mechanism for IT, for certain workloads. You have to incorporate that into your overall IT service management strategy. They're not going to be separate things. Um, click. I don't think there's going to be a single approach or a set of standards anytime soon. And I do love the, the quote that standards are great. You have so many to choose from. It's the greatest one-word oxymoron in the English language. Uh, we'll have lots of standards to choose from. The market's going to be fragmented, and I think we're going to start seeing fill-ins, a lot of very specialized cloud providers, whether or not they meet my, my criteria for being a cloud. Um, I think it's all about the application. It's not about your company. It's not about your geography. It's about the application, whether that application will move over. There are, there are things you can do to forklift an existing application over to cloud with relative little pain. There are things you can do to build new applications or to remediate applications to take advantage of cloud and make them more attractive. All right? It's about the application. This extends down to the application architecture, the data architecture, how you operate it. Um, you know, but you have to take sort of an application approach and, and, and see which ones are going to make the most sense. Um, there, there is an asymmetrical cost factor happening in cloud. And by that, I mean if, um, back to the ERP example, if you, have, if you screw in Siebel or PeopleSoft or Oracle ERP, um, you're going to spend a truckload of money. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time, hopefully with Accenture, um, and it's going, to take, it's going to take some effort, right? And if in five years you decide to switch, it's going to take roughly about the same amount of money or roughly about the same amount of time. With cloud, you can get in very, very easy and very, very quickly. You now have a, an asymmetry between getting the data out and changing your mind between when you actually start. So you can try new things. Um, and lastly, um, we haven't gotten this solved yet, but security, compliance, identity, they're just not portable yet across different cloud providers. I think that that is a potential uh, space where the service providers can start 
really adding value of adding that sort of cross-enterprise, cross-cloud identity and access management. But just because it doesn't exist now, don't, don't stop. Don't, don't slow things. There's, there's things you can try right now. Even if it's on a sort of skunk works or science experiment basis, I tell people, don't wait five years for the dust to settle because in those five years, somebody else is going to come along in your space that has figured out how to take advantage of it, and they're going to eat your lunch because you're spending IT uh, resources inefficiently. So with that, uh, I'll open it up to questions. There's my email address. Uh, and I, I managed to get in early enough to get it on Twitter, AIM, Yahoo, and my same handle on everything. So advantage of being a, a technology geek, you get in there early. So. Uh